Hello everyone, my name is Jake Gutierrez and I'll be presenting my work over Generative Adversarial Network Rooms and Generative Graph Grammar Dungeons for The Legend of Zelda. This was work done by me and Dr. Jacob Schramm in summer 2019. The idea of procedural content generation was the main inspiration of this research. And we can look back at games such as Rogue, which was released in 1980, and they use this technique to generate dungeons every time you play. So you see the dungeon rooms and the pathways connecting them. Those are precision generated, and you can expect those to be different every single time you load a new game. Similar idea with a more modern example, such as Minecraft, where they generate infinite worlds with structures and water features throughout. And even a more modern example, such as No Man's Sky, where they generate planets and creatures on those planets. Now looking at the previous research that inspired us, on the left hand side we see the use of generative adversarial networks in generating video game levels. And in the top left we have Mario levels, and in the bottom left we have smaller, smaller Zelda-like levels being generated. And on the right hand side we see something called generative graph grammar. Uh, domains recognize that uh, dungeon, dungeon missions follow a certain pattern, and if we can map that pattern and generate different missions surrounding that pattern, you can get different dungeon missions every time. And uh, on the bottom right, we can see Legend. this is an example of Legend of Zelda being used by that graph grammar technique. There were two technologies that helped us with our research. On the left-hand side, we have generative adversarial networks, as mentioned before. These networks are really great at taking original data and generating new and unique data. So you can see these faces. These, these faces were trained on a celebrity faces data set, and these are new and unique faces. On the right-hand side, we have a context-free grammar, which is the main idea behind generative graph grammar. So there are two rules, and they are mapped, indicated by the arrow. And you see the zero on the start is replaced by the one bracket zero bracket zero. And then on the second iteration, each character is replaced by its rule. And if you do that over and over and map commands to it, you can generate a fractal tree. The game Legend of Zelda is what we are inspired by for this research. And there's two, there's multiple things to do within a Zelda dungeon. So you have to obtain keys to unlock doors, kill enemies, bomb walls, complete a puzzle, get trapped, defeat the boss, and get the Triforce, which is the goal of the dungeon. So using these ideas, how do we generate a dungeon mission? To solve this problem, we use generative graph grammar as it was used in the past to generate dungeon missions. So the general idea is to have a starting graph specified by us or another human designer. And we have it, the starting graph describing the overall mission. And we can go through every node and its adjacency and find a rule that matches and then apply it to the graph. From the previous slide, one of the rules was applied to the starting graph and is now the middle graph. And we repeat this process over and over for non-terminators until we get a graph full of terminators. Now that we have this abstract graph, how do we actually get it to a 2D layout? So we take the first node, which is the starting node, and place it in the middle of a graph. Then we take its adjacencies and place them around. All the nodes are based, placed based on its previous adjacency, or randomly around its placement in the 2D grid. So we do this over and over until there are no nodes to be placed from the graph. With this method, not all adjacencies are represented in the final graph. For instance, this SL and E are not represented because they're diagonal from each other. Now that we have a 2D layout of our dungeon, we need to generate and place rooms. To generate the rooms, we'll use a generative adversarial network, and to place the rooms, we'll populate the room based on its node type and place it in the layout. For instance, if the node type was E for enemy, we'll populate the generated enemies and place it in its respective position in the layout. GANs have been used in the past to generate 2D video game levels, so we're using it to generate rooms. GANs are made up of two parts, a discriminator and a generator. The generator is responsible for generating a fake image where the discriminator determines whether the image is fake or real based on the training set. The output from the discriminator goes back to the generator to generate a more realistic image. 
This process occurs until a given number of iterations. The training set in this case are text-based runes from the original Legend of Zelda game from the video game level Corpus. Using this process, we generate runes that are based on its training data and are new and unique. At this point, we have GAN-generated runes inside a dungeon. However, not all GAN runes are beatable. To ensure that the dungeon is beatable, we need to run an A-star agent. And using data from a failed A-star agent, meaning that it didn't get to the Triforce, we can determine visited and unvisited points of interest within a room. Points of interest include doors, items, and puzzle blocks as they are necessary to beat a room. And using this data, we can draw floor tiles from two random visited and unvisited points of interest. And we can resume the A-star algorithm until the A-star beats the dungeon. And the pictures show the left-hand side being an unprocessed dungeon and the right-hand side being a processed dungeon. With this red circles highlighting areas where the post-processing algorithm drew floor tiles. And using this technique, 10 out of 30 GAN dungeon rooms were prepared. A human subject study was conducted made up of 30 participants and they played through three dungeons, the original dungeon number four, the graph grammar generated dungeon with original rooms, and a graph grammar dungeon with GAN generated rooms. And after each dungeon they were asked to rank it on a scale of 1 to 5 in terms of enjoyability, complexity, and challenge of enemies. And after they played through all three, they were asked to compare the dungeons to one another. And we also got any other comments they might have had. This study was conducted to see if their graph gamer GAN dungeons were comparable to the original dungeon. This is gameplay from one of our subjects playing through a graph GAN generated dungeon. And while this is a simple turn based compared to the original Zelda game, this really shows the complexity or not complexity of the room and map layout. So as you can see, the player is taking his time and deciding what action to take next in comparison to the enemies and ends up missing an important item called the raft item specified the blue pound sign. And this item allows you to travel across water, which ends up being important in the original dungeon we chose for the study, as we'll see in a bit. As mentioned before, participants were asked to rank dungeons on a scale of 1 to 5 in multiple categories such as enjoyment, exit challenge, enemy challenge, and so on. And I'll go through and highlight the important areas. In terms of enjoyment, original has slightly higher enjoyability but not by a statistically significant margin. And in terms of map complexity, the graph's dungeon seemed to be less complex in terms of overall layout but not significantly so. In terms of room organization, only significant difference are in graph GAN dungeons. A pairwise man Whitney used test shows graph GAN dungeons are less organized than graph and original dungeons. Now these are results from the portion of the survey where participants were asked to rank dungeons in terms of most, middle, least, and multiple categories. And we use multinomial tests to compare the number of most ratings and least ratings. The most ratings are indicated by the blue bar and the least ratings are in indicated by the green bar. Looking at enjoyment, the original seemed to be most enjoyable, but not significantly. The graph GAN dungeons were most complex and there were significantly different more of most rankings. In terms of novelty, the original was most novel, but not significantly, as it was close to graph GAN. The map challenge, original and graph GAN tied for most in map challenge, but not for least. And the graph GAN dungeon was considered most chaotic, but not statistically significantly so. These are some of the survey responses we got from our participants for each dungeon. So for the original dungeon, people said, I like that you had to wait later in the level to get the water walking thing that helped you get further in the level. I like the need to backtrack through a couple of the dungeon rooms for necessary items if you didn't find them first. This water walking thing is the raft item I mentioned previously, and this item is pretty important to the fourth dungeon as this is the first time in the game you get it, and this is the first time you get to try it out. So this, is, this raft item is an important feature in the dungeon. Looking at the raft dungeon, 
people said I did enjoy how simple the dungeon was overall, and the map layout was very simple, not very novel. And keep in mind that the Graph and GraphGAN dungeons were generated using the same generative GraphGammer method. In GraphGAN, people said, this one genuinely brought a smile to my face as I played it. It felt more like a Zelda sequel dungeon because of its variety in room layout. The rooms typically had symmetrical designs to them which made them feel organized. And looking back at the previous results, we see that the GraphGAN's rooms tend to complicate the overall layout in terms of graph as we did not get the comments from graph on the GraphGAN dungeons. We calculated the novelty in terms of dungeon, all the rooms, and unique rooms from our study. And the novelty is basically the average normalized distance between rooms. So if we're looking at a room within a dungeon, its novelty is compared to with each room besides itself within a dungeon. And the dungeon novelty is the average novelty of all the rooms in the dungeon. So looking at the dungeons, ANOVA indicates significant difference in room novelties, and Tukey's ASD indicates that Graph and GraphGAN are significantly more novel than original. An important thing to note is that Dungeon 4's novelty was higher than original Dungeon's average, as we'll get to in a bit. In terms of all the rooms used in the study, ANOVA indicates significant difference between collections of all rooms. Tukey's ASD also indicates Graph and GraphGAN significantly different than original. In terms of unique rooms, there were no significant difference. However, original and graph had many duplicates. While the GraphGAN dungeons took rooms from the original game, we'd expect to see the same 38 numbers. However, the post-processing algorithm did uh, make more unique rooms due to its algorithm. To improve our research, we could look at ways to improve upon our generative graph gamma method by using a more data-driven approach. For instance, we could expand the scope of GAN to generate overall dungeon structure, meaning we could use the original Zelda mission layouts to generate the overall structure, and then use a GAN to place those rooms. We could also use a conditional GAN to generate different room types based on parameters. For instance, we could label the original data as this is a key room, this is an enemy room, and so on and we can give the conditional GAN a parameter to generate from. So if we want an enemy room, it'll generate an enemy room based on the enemy rooms from the original set. We could also create a game closer to the original, and we use a completely different game engine to create a more streamlined game rather than a turn-based one. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and listening to my presentation. I'd also like to thank Southwestern University Scope Summer Research Program for sponsoring my research. If you have any questions, you can contact me at the Guter8 email address, or you can contact Dr. Jacob Schramm at the Schramm2 email address. If you scan the QR code, it'll take you to the link right above it, and you can view videos, source code, and more at that link about our research.